Hi everyone, my name is Anna Murdoch, and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to perform a newborn physical assessment. Before we start, there's a few things you need to be aware of before you start your assessment. First of all, you want to make sure you have good lighting so that you can adequately see your baby. Secondly, you want to make sure that your infant is calm. So you might need to have a pacifier handy or have mom nearby so that she can hold and comfort the baby. And lastly, you want to work from the least invasive skill to the most invasive. This way your baby will stay the calmest, the longest amount of time. Okay, so first thing we wanna do is we wanna assess her head and face. Since she's nice and swaddled, I'm not going to unswaddle her for this since she's happy. So I'm looking at her hair. It's nice and fine, which is typical of a newborn. And I'm gonna go ahead and feel for her fontanelles. Um, the anterior fontanelle is right here on top. It's shaped like a diamond. And it's the larger of the two fontanelles. And then the posterior fontanelle is on the back. It's sometimes harder to feel. We can feel it there. You want your fontanelles to be soft and flat. So when you rub your hand across, it should feel flat. You shouldn't feel a bulge, and it shouldn't feel like it's sunken in, like kind of like a crater would be. Okay, so next, we're going to just look at her face, and we're going to check for symmetry. So we notice that her eyes look symmetrical. We'll take a look at her ears since she turned her head. Good. Let's turn this way. Can look at her nose and her other ear. You want the outer part of your eye, um, the outer canthus of the eye, to line up with the top of the ear. Okay, and you can see that hers lines up very nicely. The ears should be flexible and go back into place if they're bent. So with her nose, since babies are nose breathers, we want to make sure her nares are patent. And to do that, we just take our finger, close one side, and she's still breathing. And then close the other side, and she's able to breathe. Okay. So for her mouth, when we look at the lips, we want to make sure there's no cyanosis or any bluish color into the lips that might indicate poor circulation. Hers are nice and pink. They're also moist. Alrighty. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to check um, the inside of her mouth. I'm going to check her hard and soft palates. And how you do that, you just take your glove finger, place it in the mouth. I'm just going to feel and make sure there's no holes or openings. And while you're doing this, you can see how she's sucking on my finger. That's how we can also check the suck reflex at the same time. Good job. Um, we want to inspect the gums. There might be some Epstein pearls present, which are normal. We want to make sure there's no teeth. If you do see teeth, that's something you will want to tell the provider about. And then we also notice that her tongue is good and moist as well. So another reflex we can check while we're here is the rooting reflex. And what that means, let's see if she'll do it for us. When we stroke the side of the mouth, she should turn towards the stimulus. So there she goes. Okay. All right, while I'm here, we'll look at her neck the best we can. And we see that she's moving her head back and forth very well, so we can assume that she has good range of motion. And that trachea does appear at midline. So for the next part of the assessment, I'm going to unswaddle her and we'll move down the body. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to move down to the torso. And I'm going to uncover just a little bit. I'm going to try to keep her legs covered just to see if it keeps her comfortable and not fussy. So first thing, 
Um, I want to feel for her clavicles. This is important because you want to look for any deformities or any decreased range of motion or if she was um, fussing or in pain when I'm palpating, that might indicate that there could be a clavicular fracture. So if you notice any of those things, definitely notify the physician. I'm gonna take her arms. We're gonna do some range of motion here. See if she'll let us. There you go. She has nice range of motion. I'm gonna give her my finger. And we're going to check her grasp reflex. You can see that she's grasping my finger, which is a normal newborn reflex. Okay. We're going to look at her fingers. We're going to make sure there's five fingers, which there are on both hands. While she's sitting here calm, we're just gonna look over her skin. While you're doing your whole assessment, you wanna look at your skin the entire time to look for any kind of skin variations. Like for example, on her face, you can see there's some red spots, typical baby acne, nothing to be concerned about. But it's important to know what type of skin variations are normal so that if you notice something abnormal, you're more aware of that and you want to notify the provider. So her skin looks great on her abdomen. Her nipple line right here is symmetrical, which is important. So to check her capillary refill, on adults we like to do capillary refill on the fingers, but on a newborn we like to do it right over the sternum. I'm going to hold and press for about five seconds and let go. And you see the skin was blanched and then the color refilled, and we want it to refill in less than three seconds. Next, I'm gonna check her brachial pulses. You want your pulses to be equal on both sides. I know, that wasn't fun, was it? And we'll see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and listen to lung sounds. When you're counting your respiratory rate, you want to count for a full minute. For the purpose of this video, I'm not going to take the full minute. So for your apical pulse for a newborn, you're going to go to the fourth intercostal space, just left of the sternum. Again, you're going to listen for a full minute. Next, I'm going to listen to bowel sounds. While you're doing this, you can look at the abdomen shape. Newborns naturally have a round appearance to their abdomen, so that is normal. But if the belly looked unusually distended or tight, we may need to do some further evaluation. Go. So while we're here, also we want to look at her breathing effort. Newborns are belly breathers, so they breathe in the, around their diaphragm, called diaphragmatic breathing. You can see that. You can see her belly moving as she's breathing. That's normal. If she were in distress, you might notice some retractions, especially right here, substernally, or up here, in the, um, suprasternally, or even intercostally, so within the rib cage. 
but she looks nice and relaxed. So we can see that her umbilical cord has fallen off and the area around it is healed nicely. When you're looking at the umbilical area, you wanna see if there's any redness or unusual drainage. Hers looks perfect. And then we're gonna go ahead and check her Mora reflex. Okay, so to do that, it's called the startle reflex. So what should happen when I lift her up just a little bit and let go, you're gonna see her arms flail out to the side and come back into her body. There we go. So next, we're going to move on down. You will want to examine the genitalia, but for the purpose of this video, we're not going to. We're going to go ahead and move down to her legs. So when we look at her legs, we want to see that they're symmetrical. They're equal in length. We're going to look at her feet and see that she has five toes. And right here, we're checking another reflex as she's grasping my thumb here. We can check range of motion. I know. I'm gonna look at the folds in her legs and see that they look equal, and they do. So next we're gonna do the um, Barlow maneuver and the Ortolani maneuver. This is gonna check for congenital hip dysplasia. So we do the Barlow first. And to have a positive test, you're gonna hear a clunk. And that would mean that the hip has dislocated, which hers has not. And we're gonna do a femoral pulse, right here in the groin. Again, your pulses should be equal on both sides and strong. We're gonna look at her feet. You can also check capillary refill on the area of the knee. The reason we wanna do it more centrally in newborns is to check for that central cyanosis. A central cyanosis um, can indicate there might be a cardiovascular issue that we would need to notify someone about. Okay, so next, we're gonna go to our last part of our exam. We're gonna flip her over, and she might not like it. So while we're here, we're gonna check her tone. You can see that she has tight legs. She's able to lift her head a little bit. That's great, that means she has good tone. We're gonna look at her shoulders and her spine. They appear to be straight. You know, we're gonna try to do this fast too. We're gonna look at her bottom, her gluteal folds. You can see there that they're even, which is what we want. We wanna look at her lower back. And what we're gonna look for is any kind of um, bulge or a tuft of hair or a deep dimple. All of those could indicate a neural tube defect. Okay, so after your exam, you can go ahead. She likes to have her arms out when she's swaddled, so we're gonna leave them out. Put her back the way she was. Give her her passy. And when you're done with your exam, you wanna make sure your diaper is nice and dry. Put them back in the position that they were in and make sure they're nice and comfortable before you leave the room.